and we are live. We are live. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, once again, all my darlings, welcome to the uh, Icebreakers stream where we're going to be talking about Nordic shenanigans when it comes to the game industry. My name is Hedley uh, from the IGDA Finland slash Metaplay uh, from Finland. And as always, I'm joined by, well, not always, actually, for once, we have Joachim uh, Linna from Sweden. Wow. <laughs> what a way to introduce <laughs> me. There was sass there. There was a lot of sass. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm here. Hi, I'm Kim. Nice to meet you all. Uh, and, yeah, and then we have from Norway, our lovely. Uh, hi, I'm Sylvia. I'm from uh, the Norwegian Network for Video Game Companies, Nonita. Yeah, but should what? I do a little explanation of that, that why I didn't introduce myself as from something? That's okay. Maybe that's not clear. That's uh, up to you. you I'll say formerly IGDA Sweden before IGDA Sweden was... Unfortunately, Ooh. shut down, but there will be future product, projects. And this one, obviously, is the most important right now. Obviously, obviously. This is our life, heart, and soul. But you're not here just because of us. Uh, you're probably here because we have uh, interesting topics and wonderful guests. And uh, we have three guests from each of the countries uh, today. And we have, we're going to start with uh, Mark. Please introduce yourself and welcome to the stream. Yes, hi, thank you. Uh, I'm Mark Watson. I currently work at Mojang Studios. And I say currently, but I have also been at Mojang Studios for a long time, um, these last uh, 11 years or so. This is my first and only industry job, and probably a lifer here. Um, but yeah, I'm a producer uh, working with uh, Minecraft Dungeons. Okay, nice, nice. Might have some some good questions about that later on. But uh, then uh, our next guest is Ole. Welcome Hello. aboard. And, uh, thank let it rip. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, my name is Ole. I'm from Norway, live in Oslo. Um, I work as a producer on uh, at Funcom on the project Dune Awakening which is a, a still unreleased uh, project. Um, I've been there for one and a half year plus, uh, but I've been in the industry for since 2011, so 12-ish years. I've uh, been doing a lot of indie stuff in the past, so I uh, founded uh, a company together with a bunch of great people back in the days uh, called Krillbyte, and then uh, did another startup uh, around language learning, gamified language learning, and then I moved to Red Thread Games, where I worked as a lead designer. Uh, been doing a different, few different things throughout my career, but production and producing has been kind of my like that's that's my favorite uh, place to be, I think. But yeah, happy to be here. Sounds good. Sounds good. You're in the uh, right right group then. Uh, wonderful. And then last uh, but not least, uh, my uh, countrywoman Carolina. Uh, welcome aboard. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, like Hal said, I'm Karolina Kuutti and I'm from Finland and I'm living in Espoo. Uh, I'm former producer, but currently I am a narrative designer and communication manager and I work at QuickSave Interactive. Uh, QuickSave is a Helsinki-based game company, and we are now a team of 12 with six different nationalities. And we specialized in HTML5 games, and within a year we have released two different Web3 games. Uh, first was Tezotopia Battles in Tezos blockchain, and then in September, Infinity Raylights in Running blockchain. That was uh, that was a lot of impressive buzzwords. I like. <laughs> uh, thank you and uh, welcome on board, everyone. And then I also will mention the person you don't see but makes a lot of this possible, which is Viv, our lovely producer. Thank you, Viv, for everything you do. We love you. Uh, but yeah, let's get to the meat on the bone. Uh, a little bit about uh, being a producer and 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 maybe. Uh, you could start with telling about a little bit more about yourself uh, and, and the game you're currently working and, and about your team, what kind of a, what size of a team you're working with. Uh, maybe about the company as well, like how big is it and how big is your team within and 
and and how you go with that. Is there anyone who really want to go wants to go first? Usually, there's never anyone. <laughs> uh, but I feel like Ule, you were the first one to smile, so I think that as a yes. There you go. Yes. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I'll be the the one to take the plunge. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Nothing. Just a shitty okay. pun. Please go <laughs> on. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, um, uh, I can tell a little bit more about uh, Funcom and uh, the work we're doing now. Uh, the project is, uh, so Funcom is, is a, a company with 30 years of history in it. It's worked on a bunch of different cool games. Um, but currently I'm a part of the Dune Awakening team, which is a pretty large team. I, I mean, for... Uh, for me, it's a huge jump going from from India to this. But we're a team of um, around four hundred uh, plus four hundred and fifty, maybe closer to. Uh, wow! Spread across multiple uh, uh, countries and and even continents. So we have an office in North Carolina as well. Uh, so the team is quite big. It's an ambitious project. It's an open world survival. MMO <clears throat> uh, set in the Dune uh, IP and universe. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if you're a fan of Dune, uh, this is the game for you, I guess. That's, uh, cool. yeah, it's, it feels pretty surreal to be working on such an IP. That's, that's uh, pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, my, <clears throat> so on a team uh, and a project this scale, you, uh, you probably have uh, a bunch of producers. I work with a production team of, uh, I think we're close to 30 producers in total, wow. somewhere around there, 20, somewhere between 25 and 30 maybe uh, in total. Um, and there's uh, a bunch of different teams and teams I uh, manage uh, are different feature teams. So I can't talk too much about it since it's still an uh, unreleased project and we're, uh, uh, yeah keeping cards close, but, uh, but yeah, on different feature teams and different teams working on, on, uh, yeah, content and feature in features in the game. That's as far as I can go, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's really fun. I, uh, really enjoy it. It's a great team. It has this Nordic culture and Nordic vibe where it's uh, open door policy. Uh, I do judo with my CEO, uh, Sick. on Mondays and <laughs> Wednesdays. It's, 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 it's a really, really nice vibe in the, in the office. I like it. Fair, fair. Sounds. Uh, I don't know. It could be intimidating having a boss who has like, like very thorough judo knowledge, but like at He's the same a black time. belt, even. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping the employees in their place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. And and I gotta say, it must be kind of interesting to play work in a game that will have its sequel come out soon, and then you can kind of go see kind of what you're working like you know a different perspective of what you're dealing with on a daily basis like i could imagine that's really really cool yeah absolutely uh carolina mark anyone who wants to go yeah i can i quickly mentioned about our company but yeah yeah funny thing about like i mentioned that i'm no longer working as a producer even though i started working at quicksave four years ago and i started as a producer but eventually with different projects, I realized that hmm, I want to be more cre on the creative side and I eventually shift my way into the narrative design. I now I'm in charge of, all of our company's narrative design and it felt very natural for me to grab on the communication side. So that's like a main difference that I hold almost same tasks as I did as a producer, but minus the production side and product management actually yeah. so like kind of like the nice parts of like dealing with people. yes yes the polished side and someone else can do the dirty work <laughs> yeah. uh and just to just to make it clear if someone's wondering like why why do you have someone who's not a producer on this when we're doing producer i did my thesis on being a producer in the game industry in finland and Carolina was one of the persons I actually interviewed for that thesis, <laughs> and, and and I I I have it on good knowledge that she she was a very very good producer. So uh, you know, sometimes you got to break the rules. Uh, yeah, I can go to the memory lane and remember my time as a producer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Back in my time, I used to do. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, thank you very much, Mark. Yeah. Well, and uh, it's interesting hearing that there's hope for the rest of us uh, shifting <laughs> around and, and trying different, uh, different things. Um, but that's actually kind of my background too, is, is trying lots of different things. So um, I, uh, I joined Mojang about 11 years ago. Um, I started the customer service team because that was, you know, when you have a, a team of 15 people um, making this game that's becoming very popular, you probably don't want them answering customer service emails. Um, so I, I made myself uh, valuable to them. And, and then I worked, uh, did a bit of social media for our card game Scrolls, which some people have heard of, but uh, another card game called Hearthstone came out around the same time. Um, and then I, I worked as a kind of as a producer um, for content creation, user generated content uh, in Minecraft. So uh, Minecraft Marketplace, and then uh, the thing that predated that, the Minecraft Realms and like custom player levels and basically mini games. It was kind of part certification, part brand. Um, and then led a team with that and transitioned into production afterwards. So um, went from being kind of product owner, team manager into producer, uh, and that was a pretty natural slide over there. But yeah, lots of um, lots of things that sort of all touch each other in these um, in this constellation of, of job roles. Obviously, I, I don't know if anyone any one of us were going to slide into like an artist role anytime soon, but you know, uh, communications and organizing people and like all these soft skills have a lot of a lot of overlap. Absolutely. Yeah. Can I ask what size what size is the team that you work with now? Yeah. So. Um, I, I guess that has different layers to it. The so I'm working uh, currently with a, in a in a team of about you know, eight or nine people. Uh, our whole project has we'll say around a hundred people, and uh, all of Mojang is hundreds of people now. Um, mm -hmm. It was fifteen when I started, and it's I don't know seven hundred plus. I, I don't know the actual numbers, but we're in two different offices. So yeah, uh, and uh, most recently I, I worked with Minecraft Dungeons. Uh, and Minecraft board games as well. It was a nice little side project um, that I got to sort of produce and sort of do some creative stuff for it as well. So, yeah. So I think that this topic is something that, I mean, I, I mentioned it before we started the stream, but this topic is something that we're really interested in about because because there are so many different ways of being a producer in the games industry, whether you're doing it for a small team, a medium team, or a large team. And so uh, based on your experiences or what your thoughts, can you tell me a little bit about what you think a producer is, the role of a producer? What is a producer? Would you like uh, to start yeah, again, I would, Andreas? I would, I would add quickly this, because I think this is a role a lot of people outside don't really quite understand. So like, hmm. yeah, how would you open it? Try and be short. I, I mean, it's about helping the team succeed and be able to deliver the project on time with the intended quality to make it like super short, I would say. That can, yeah, I can touch on so many different types of <laughs> tasks throughout the day. Uh, and I also want to mention maybe that being a producer might be different depending on on. So the scale of the project. So you might have different types of producers or maybe not types, but producers tackling different problems or areas or challenges that you want to overcome. So, uh, <clears throat> so you're, you're, um, it's a good question, but, but it depends a little bit on, uh, on scale and size and stuff. But I think the short form I mentioned in the beginning is kind of like the, yeah. Yeah. Me I actually totally agree. And, uh, I would say that, like you mentioned, that I think producers, one of the biggest tasks, need, you need to be your team's biggest cheerleader. Mm -hmm. But if I would say something like what, what traits should, should the producer have, you probably be very good at organizing. You have to be very good at putting out all the fires during, during every production phase. And wherever there's a fire, go turn it out and... Um, yeah, you have to be really good at dealing with stress, and it's not for everyone to be a producer, but it's really fun if you find the joy out of it. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I um, when I took this role, when I kind of moved over from my old role into 
uh, an associate producer position at the time. Uh, I wish that someone had said, this is exactly what it is that a producer does. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's so different. You know, I remember looking it up on, you know, whatever websites I could find, like, what have I gotten myself into? Um, <laughs> I remember watching the, the double fine um, uh, documentary for a broken age um, and just watching them go through the entire process of making a game. Um, because there is something different and distinct about going from like a manager of a process into, all right, now we're in production and now uh, the wheels are turning and, and we have to make things happen. So yeah, I think I agree. It's, it's kind of helping the team. Um, it's kind of whatever needs doing. Um, but it's also a bit like, um, it's different from project to project and studio to studio. I think there's a lot of overlap, but even in my like little microcosm, I have an idea of what our producers do. But I am kind of fascinated to hear about uh, other producers and their experiences and the kind of roles that they've had to take on at their studios. Actually, that that reminds me of one thing that, like you, Mark, mentioned that you didn't first start as a producer. You sort of evolved into it. So I think producers have to be pretty flexible that whenever th there is a task that no one else has time or resources to do it, actually the producer do does it. And eventually, if you're lucky enough, that may be turn out to be your new role, so. I think that's, that's a good really point. interesting. And it's also interesting how, <clears throat> so, producer can, can do, can, you can, can evolve into a producer from many different areas. Uh, so you can start out in, in customer service or QA or the programmer or as an artist and then evolve into a producer because you show those and managerial skills and those organizational skills and those soft skills that you're talking about, <clears throat> Mark. Uh, but all of that experience that you bring with you from the previous roles that you've had, it can, it can really help you in the producer role and also really shape what type of, of producer you, would, you might be, like how, how you might be helping the team, right? So, so it's really interesting. So I'm a little curious about this uh, putting out fires and dealing with stress thing, uh, because I guess dealing with stress is something that we all do in game development. Uh, but if you're managing a team, I, I understand that it, it might be a little bit more uh, face value, you know, uh, like you have to deal with it a little bit more face to face with people and all the time. Um, but I'm also curious from someone that hasn't really worked in a team larger than 10 people without a producer, like what are some tasks that apart from putting out fires, tend to come out, come up continuously, like something that you can feel like is part of your everyday, like work experience. It's a hard question, maybe if, if there's a lot that, that comes into, you know, mm, fixing yeah. issues, but sending I emails, it. maybe I like, I, <laughs> I assume that I don't know anything about being a what producer. What is this 2010? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we use Discord now. ChatGPT can handle emails. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but as for like day to day tasks, I mean, again, different for studio. But um, you know, things like um, on on my team, um, holding stand up meetings, um, and I think I, I've had to sort of learn how how that should work over time. Um, and obviously, like you can go in there and you can be a kind of a dictator and point at everyone and say report in. But really, the point of uh, doing a daily stand-up is really for each other to check in um, and to be able to facilitate that. So um, some of it is like, what is our progress toward our stated goal for maybe this development sprint? Um, but some of it's just like, have you two talked to each other? Uh, maybe you two should talk to each other. And um, or even like, I don't even have to be a part of that. I've just I've set the stage. I've I've scheduled the meeting, and now naturally these people do talk to each other and say, we should take this offline and, and figure out this problem together. So there's there's just a lot of kind of day-to-day -day sort of making space, uh, I guess, for people. Um, and then making sure that those, that those channels of communication exist, whether they're theoretical channels or whether they're literal, like I made a, a Slack channel for this thing or, or whatever. Um, just kind of facilitating um, and making sure people have what they need. I'll agree. Yeah. And that's uh, a really good answer actually i like that com facilitating communication thing that's something that i've struggled with a lot without a producer it's interesting as a producer you also usually are able to take a step back more than the people are 
who are actually working kind of in the trenches on the actual tasks. And then maybe you have heard something or know something about exact something that could help a person on their team solve the exact problem they're working on because they were working on it on a different team or in a different uh, part of the studio uh, from a different angle. So you can, you can be the person who's just like, ah, you should talk to that person because that person also had the same problem like literally a week ago. Keeping your ears open and being a resource for people is really important. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I think it, it sounds like it's, it's a lot about with, with, with humans, uh, dealing with humans and, and, and everything that goes goes with that. It's it's kind of like keeping your ears to the ground and open to hear what, what's going on. But like, uh, if I could go a little bit further about this, like, because, uh, yeah, you're, you're trying to see if person A is dealing with the problem that person Y has already solved. Yeah, put them together. Or like, if you know that these people would benefit from working together, yeah, put them together. Be your office Tinder, whatever. But like, what about uh, when uh, if, if what what's your take on like personal issue? Like, if people have like you know have a have a shitty day, or or or, or you know, or you heard that they have like rough time at home, or or like hobbies or relationship or anything, and that will of course reflect mirror in the uh, at work. How how do you do you deal with that if if you do at all? I think that's very, very good question. And that's sort of a topic that you have to be very sensitive about as because all of people are different and everyone has their own communication ways and you kind of have to respect and remember that, oh, this, this person functions this way. And I know that probably he, had, he has this happening at home. So it's a skill that you have to have an eye for people's reactions and everyday lives and if you spot something and feel in your gut that this is my moment to ask are you okay can I even like sort of a, put it in the shorter que question in the discussion that hey I saw this and this how, how you feel about mm. but start in the discussion and read the people and read the room you know one time I I think it was a couple of years ago I'd seen a, a GDC talk about about producers before I was one. And um, there was this kind of structure and it said that people broke down into roughly about three categories of producers. There's the, the ones that were people focused and process focused and product focused. And they said, usually you'll get two. And if you're really, really good, if you're an amazing producer, maybe you'll get all three. But I, I have found that often people gravitate towards towards two of those. Um, and so I myself am very much, you know, uh, I'm a big Minecraft fan, and so I'm I'm very much into the product, and I can kind of say if something might resonate with uh, with players, and then the process of of getting things all streamlined and making sure that things work, um, and that we've removed barriers from people. Uh, but the third part, the people, the actual people part of it, there there are others on our team who are better than, at that than I am, um, and. I lean into their strengths on on that because I'm instead of beating myself up that I'm not everything to everyone all at once. I say that these are these are my strengths, um, and then that person might be very much into uh, people and the process, but don't know as much about our game or something. Yeah. Are you a part no, of? Our, our, oh, sorry. No, I'm just trying to think that which category I will put myself into. But yeah, I, that's yeah. really interesting. I would say I, I would be the people type definitely because the, nowadays the uh, communications manager is more like an internal and external communications with everyone. Yeah. Producer subcategories. Mm. <laughs> it sounds like subclasses in like WoW yeah, exactly. or something like that. <laughs> I can send you a spreadsheet with everything. Yeah, know. exactly. <laughs> at, at what level do you get this one? Uh, yeah, that's re really cool. Uh, like I've I've also heard about like some producer, like uh, executive producers, like EPs who have an open door once a week, and people can come there. And I've heard everything. People just like breaking down, crying about their civilian life. Someone just comes there and sits for I don't know twenty minutes, and then they're like, 
okay, time to work. Well, maybe that's just Finland. Maybe yeah, you know, who knows? Uh, but uh, but yeah, so like it's it's interesting to hear these different kind of approaches, and 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 I, I think they're all kind of valuable. And like you all have said, it depends on the company. But but mm. good, interesting answers. Thank you. We are, yeah. we actually have a comment from uh, from our audience uh, about that, um, who is saying that it depends on if the person is willing to talk about it. Uh, because it is a very personal topic, and uh, and is it a given that people should be telling, or uh, this kind of problems to the team or the, the project manager or the project? Uh, yeah, do do you feel like uh, that this? I mean, do you have any comments on that? I think that's a very good point that you cannot go to people that hey, tell me your problems now. Hmm. You have to see if a pe- uh, person is willing to tell you and trust you enough, or yeah. Uh, well, for yeah. us, I think with our configuration of people, um, we have just the way that our kind of matrix of, of people is set up. We've got people managers um, that, you know, work in a certain capacity. So a lot of times these, um, the kinds of personal things that, you know, people might open up about, sometimes that goes to managers, sometimes it goes to the team or producers as well. But um, I think making sure that people have a, a resource and someone to go to when they need to, and then um, I can see in a much smaller organization, maybe a, a producer and a manager are the same person. Maybe they are the person you go vent to. But in a larger team, maybe the producer is just the person who uh, organizes the the work tickets and, and, and that's that. But I think in either case, regardless of what that producer is to you, it's it's always good to know and to be able to like foster team communication where someone can be like, hey, I'm having a, a pretty crappy day um so like maybe heads up i'll be out or i'll be off slack or 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 something like that um and that takes i think building up some team trust um to allow people to at least get the basics out um otherwise you just maybe you don't hear from them um which is which is not the optimal situation yeah exactly i also think um i mean as a as a producer you you uh to have a vested interest in in your team's health and well-being like you're you want your team to be healthy and and be able to perform and that they are having a good time while they're working on on the project so uh, uh creating those spaces where the team can hang out and actually not just work but also just i don't know play a game or go to lunch or yeah whatever might help build the the team bond. Uh, I also uh, really like trying to meet every. So if somebody is having a bad day, <clears throat> meeting that with okay, I might not know everything about what's going on with the other person. Let me just try and make this. Uh, yeah, just make it as easy as possible for the other person to uh, to uh, yeah. And and yeah, it just just oh, what is it called? Uh, treat it as default to positive. Like it's there's nothing necessarily negative about this uh, 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 response. Let's say somebody on Slack were responding in a in a negative way. Maybe they just recently like uh, put their fit, foot into a puddle, or uh, their uh, girlfriend broke up, or. I mean, you don't you don't know what's going on in the other people's lives, so it's important to meet that with that attitude of of uh, empathy and, and not uh, yeah, just be too open to to can that, I, that basically. Can I piggyback that that a little bit because this is a little bit what what I guess kind of everyone's been saying. Like, I, I think it, it's it's a so what you said that you gotta meet them as a person, you gotta meet them like with this uh, openness and positivity, and and then you gotta read the room and you gotta consider if the person wants to talk and it's it's i would say uh i've noticed at our place uh, our, our studio it's 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 a culture thing like a co- company culture thing like it will take some time but if you build these things that makes it feel trustworthy and like for example i have been doing this face to face it's like where it's one hour where i talk with person like we talk about civilian life we talk about hobbies we talk about work and we just kind of like a check up like once a month uh nowadays every second month because there's too many of us uh and and in the beginning it was a little it's finland it was a little awkward 
but after a while people start opening up more and more and and i, I think i've noticed like if you make you have to work for a culture change uh to make it like bigger thing to get people to open up if that makes sense yeah there's actually a, a, another question in the chat about this topic exactly. I guess this is what the one thing that people got excited about. Uh, um, so how long does it take for team building and are there activities that you have done in your career that helps team members bond? Oh, good, a good question. Mm, it is. Well, I, I don't know if there's a, a fixed time, but um, <clears throat> something I've learned about at least in, in Funcom recently, is that you, a team goes through four phases. So you have the forming phase where you kind of form the team. You have the, uh, the um, storming phase where you're kind of like, okay, you're trying to, to, to make something together. And then you have the norming phase where things kind of like start to click and you start to understand each other <clears throat> a little bit more. And then you have the performing phase, which is where you, your team is like, you, you almost like the person you're working with will do the thing that you were thinking of before you did it, that kind of uh, uh, click in the team or that kind of uh, dynamics. Uh, but I don't know if there's a time, but you, you just got to get to know the team and, and what drives them. So it might be so different from team to team, right? So some teams might be uh, into, uh, yeah, different team building stuff than the other teams. Well, in those phases, I mean, I, I also, I think I've heard that philosophy as well. Those can take differing amounts of time depending on the type of project or the location that you're in or, or, or something like, you know, we, we had a bunch of um, people that we worked with that were not, you know, we, they were one time zone away and we didn't see them in person a lot. And so it's, it's difficult to build those relationships, um, which is why it, you know, hopefully you can fly out and, and meet each other. Um, but if you are all in person, you still need to take the time to facilitate those kinds of things. Like if, if you don't have the space, let's say for a, like a larger team to, to get together and to uh, meet up and, and to take that time, then it's just, it's more difficult to, to kind of bond. Um, what you're left with then are just your meeting times, you know, um, and that's, that's the bare minimum uh, is we all show up at a meeting, we do a stand up or we do a sprint review or we do all these different things and maybe maybe someone cracks a joke in there and you all you know have a little little bit of fun but if you if you never got to meet up and and spend that time together it just that whole process takes longer yeah i would definitely say the onboarding is very important in the getting into the project and getting into the team but one one thing that i want to mention is also the recruiting phase is also very important. Do you hire the person for their skills or skills and their people skills so that you know that when you hire the people that they will be a great fit for this role and for the team with their energy, which is very important thing too, that that's one thing you can cross from your list that, okay, I kind of know that this person will get along with the others and it's also a team effort it's not just the managers to get the new person in the team it's also with the team that everyone knows that hey this is the new person let's get him or her or they together and let's be nice and let's be all, let's be all friends i like that yeah. mentality that's mm -hmm. that sounds really important i'll take a uh, a person with a little bit maybe less seniority and good people skills over someone who you know thinks they're a rock star and maybe has the skills to back it up but can't get along with people um, yeah, because definitely. games are such a collaborative process that it it almost kind of doesn't matter how good you are if yeah. no one likes you no one gets along with you you don't have the the people skills just to to jive with others i think that the kind of bare minimum is that you're polite and you show up and you kind of like you can work well but but really you want someone who can get along you don't all have to go out mm -hmm. and drink it after work every day but you got to be able to talk to each other and so that's that's far more valuable i think um than than just talent alone yep 
are you guys a part of the, the recruitment process in your company? Well, yeah, I'm about to ask the same. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm curious about because you're you're asking uh, or you mentioned it, and I was I was curious. Uh, I try to help here and there, and I have been very big part of uh, like onboarding. And once the new exports, once they move in Finland, I want to be there to help them get their homes in here and like get their everyday life together here. Yeah, I've been on, um, I've been both a hiring manager and I've been on um, interviews for our project. It's not super common because um, that's usually like executive producer, production director, or like managers um, in, a, in a larger project, I guess, like ours maybe. But um, yeah, I, I get pulled into interviews sometimes and it's often maybe like the second interview, just seeing how people kind of jive with each other and I'll bounce some questions and and give some impressions afterwards and then you all kind of regroup and say okay you know on paper they've got they've got this and that's great but um were they nice did you like them you know could could you work in the trenches with them day by day yeah i'm similar to mark here been in a few been been pulled into a few interviews usually at the second or third stage uh but yeah So we're going to move a little bit away from that, and I want to go uh, to a different topic, or back to the role of a producer. And I was wondering if you might be able to tell me or give me maybe one or two important things to know about being a producer that maybe people don't know. Uh, would you like to start, Carolina? Yeah, I was thinking that hmm, if I would explain a producer role to someone, hmm. One thing that I always say that I think uh, being a producer is sort of a state of mind that, yeah, it's not an easy role like I mentioned. And I think it's it needs a very specific type of person that you can have, like we already discussed that you can have technical background or creative background you and each each time you bring different skill sets on the table and you bring something else to the people but yeah i would say that it's a state of mind and we already discussed that what what are the main things to know about but something that people don't know about um i don't know Hopefully, um, you'll need a strong sense of resiliency, I guess, and and some uh, emotional fortitude. Um, it can be tough because um, you're working with. I think one of the struggles that I find is that we're you're working with other people's work, and so I'm not sitting there writing, sitting there drawing, sitting there doing these things. But I'm working with their work, and so there, there is an amount of like personal attachment to that work, um, and then there are the, the sort of uh, trials and turmoil as as you say, well, we only have this much time for the work, and now it's something that someone's uh, personally and emotionally invested in, um, but then the reality is kind of set in, and you have a certain amount of time and a certain amount of budget, or else no one gets paid. Um, which I guess especially true in much smaller companies, but um, but even for the larger ones, you, there's that consideration. So you are working with the work, and to other people, it's personal, and to producers, it's often very much got to be taken in context with everything else around it. Yeah, I think you said it well. Very in depth. The, uh, the resilience and the fortitude, like you have to really. Like uh, when when things get stressful, you're there to try and calm people down and make sure that okay, let's look at this stack. Let's look at the priorities. What are we actually going to tackle first here? And then like that that kind of uh, problem solving mind, uh, but being able to like pull the stress level a little bit down, it's a, it's a useful skill, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And, and I would actually add that it's. More than meets the eye that I think producers could can't be 
describe as ninjas that they are working silently doing their work and even though they look like they are currently not doing as much they could be juggling with seven different things on their head and managing things here and there and it's good that producer role isn't that every time every second out there it's just letting people do their work and being there for them if they need you even if they don't, you can just breathe on their necks a little bit. <laughs> it's uh, interesting that you mentioned... Oh, sorry. Hell, do you have anything? No, 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 no. Yeah, no, go on. Go on. Because we were talking, like, because we obviously planned this uh, episode a little bit about, like, all the questions that we wanted to, to put out. And I, f I feel like we all have some different misconceptions about producers. And one that I had for a little while before I, you know... Did my little reading and watched some GDC talks and stuff like that. Was that like, yeah, producers don't do much. They mostly sit and drink <laughs> coffee and then answer some phone calls when people need them. Um, but that's obviously not true, as we've cleared up now. Uh, but are there any like other misconceptions or myths that you've heard people talk about that you want to debunk here and now? Like that, this is your one chance to debunk some myths about producers. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I think one thing I would I would come to think of is, and this is a hard one because, uh, so, I'm not the best at this. I'm in meetings a lot of the time, but the misconception of a producer should always be in meetings, or you would be expected as a producer to always be in meetings, shouldn't be what you strive for. Like you should be striving for being in zeros, like almost zero meetings that you, when something pops up and you have to deal with it, you actually have the bandwidth. That's something I'm not always good at, but I'm working on for sure. Yeah, actually, I, when I was working still as a producer, someone close to me once said that, yeah, I could never be a producer. I'm not tough enough that, or I'm not serious enough. And I'm like, Am I serious? Am I mean enough? So I think that could be one that as a producer, you have to keep up the straight face and get everyone in line and get the project done on time. And so I think I, I think no one's that black and white. So sometimes project and uh, game needs someone to be on charge, but it doesn't mean you have to be dull or serious. Yeah, I agree. I, I think I've told people at work that um, how weird I'm being at any given time is just a reflection of my state of mind, not like of my job necessarily. So if I'm just being a total weirdo, that's me normal and happy. <laughs> um, and if I'm if I'm very serious, it's not because I've been stuck in meetings or that's because it's my job. It's because things are maybe a little bit more serious or or something. But yeah, I think you can. I, it also depends on like what what you want to set up with people like you know are you a producer in a studio where you were also a manager like do you uh, uh, certain perceptions or expectations but i think in a lot of times you know a producer is a member of the team who is just kind of helping facilitate for everyone else and keeping them on track so they can very much become a part of the team they're not you know maybe some studios have them doling out the work but a lot of my time is like help me understand the work so I can help you plan the work. And, um, you know, that can be, that can be a fun process, uh, if, if we let it be. Yeah. If I, so, uh, what, what we talked a little bit before Joachim, Joachim asked the question and then regarding this question, uh, something I've used quite often to describe it, like in a, when I have to like condense it a lot is that uh, if we have a, we have a producer and we have a team, producer is kind of the shield around the team, uh, you know, protects them from the outside world so they can focus on the job. And sometimes that means ordering pizza. Sometimes that means you got to go buy some random shit that doesn't work at the office. Sometimes it means you got to learn a new tool or you got to like, it, it's just like a bunch of like, I don't do you, is, does this make sense to you? Do you agree with that? Or does, would you want to like take that further or some other way? Yeah, I can tell you how that manifests with us. Like when you when you said the the shield, and then you 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 give a bunch of disparate examples, which really shows the breadth of what a producer can end up doing. But when I when I think shielding the team, um, there's a specific thing I'm I'm thinking of where 
let's say you're you're in a, an organization with a bit of a hierarchy um, because you know a project needs to be organized, and someone outside the team asks a question. Now, if they ask that question directly to the person working on the thing, that might cause some panic, um, especially if they're like, "Well, this is a director level person," um, because it's taken a certain way. And now I have the ability to push back or further ask questions or spend my time in a meeting, whereas that person might want to just go finish what they were programming. So it's a bit of you get to be an interface, and sometimes that interface is a shield, um, not to like keep the predators at bay, but just because like you're going to ask a question in a way that I understand, and then I'm going to relay that in a way that they're going to understand. And it's it's information gathering, it's information distribution. Um, Honestly, uh, yeah. it just sounds like a lot to be a producer. Like I, I know we we're talking about like, oh yeah, it's a fun job. You get to like talk to people and and like be excited and passionate about a video game, but there seems to be a lot in it. And like I'm, I'm, I would be on the other side, obviously, from from being a programmer and more of a game designer. Like I'm never gonna be a producer. Uh, but like you guys sound like pretty good producers uh, in my book. Like it sounds like something I would want. Um, something, so can I can I quickly say yeah. what you said? Something I've heard jokingly said about being a producer, like having ADHD is a prerequisite for being a I mean I do, a but like I don't know. It helps. Oh yeah, sure. Like that's something I've heard too, but you know, I, I like to put my ADHD into reading documentation and programming instead. I think it's a little different. But this is something that I find really interesting as well. Um, not from being on a lot of game projects, like I'm young and I'm new to the industry in that sense. But is there something like, because uh, I've obviously told you now, like, yeah, you guys seem like good producers. This is what I would want. Is there anything that you want, would want your past, present or future colleagues to know? Like something you could just tell them like, hey, this is how I want you to act towards me or this is what I can really do for you that people seem to not understand or should understand. And if you don't want to bring in present colleagues, I understand. That's why I mentioned past and future as well. Yeah, this, this is your chance to like educate your colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. We have tough it. questions. Like, <laughs> that's the thing. And if you don't want to answer your question, we can move on as well. Oh, no, I'll I... answer any question. I'll, I'll talk about current. <laughs> I just abstract out a layer so that there aren't any needs. <laughs> so, what, what is I know that? I, th I think the know that there's always an open door kind of policy is. It's a good thing to tell everyone who starts uh, joins the project that there's like if if there's anything you can always come to me. That's just the default. Um, and then if you're not comfortable going to me, then uh, send me a message and we'll uh, yeah catch up or uh, let me know how I can help. I mean it's it's that's what we're what we're here for. Just help. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, that would be my, my one thing. Yeah. Uh, actually I would add to that also that I, I feel like sometimes people forget that producer is also a part of the team that drives to the same goal. So now, now that I thought about that, often people ask themselves that what could a producer do for me, but one thing could that be settled on the what could I do to make that producer's job easier or it's the same goal of course producer's job is to help people and be there for the people but after all we're here on the same goal yes please <laughs> JFK answer like don't ask what, you can, what your producer can do to you ask what you can do <laughs> for your producer <laughs> that would make my life so much easier yeah <laughs> You can you can take uh, that line. Oh, great. For me, um, what I would want to convey is, anytime I send you a Slack message, it is the most important thing ever. And you, no, it's uh, it's it's not actually the most important thing uh, to those people, unfortunately. Um, I might think it is. I'm, you know, I'm like, oh, at person, do you know? Oh, I need this thing. We need to know this thing. Um, but it's part of good communication. Um, but but really. I go. I think, yeah, making what you can do for making other people's lives easier. Um, but then also, I'll I'll piggyback on that and say, 
feedback on the process. Like, mm. if you see something, say something. Like, uh, does this not work? Well, well, then let us know. Um, I mean, I I run uh, sprint retrospectives and. We do like team health checks, and we uh, we do those kinds of things to to try to measure that. So sprint retros really are a great time to capture that. But but really, if if you're like, hey, this thing keeps coming up, it's not very smooth. Let's let's feedback on that. Like let's try to work it out. Um, one of the biggest points of friction for me has been things like um, just getting the work documented and understood. You know, they know what they have to go do. But then if it's not documented and understood in, in some kind of a, a work ticket, then how do we communicate that out to the rest of the organization? And then, you know, someone questions your work later on uh, and they never saw it. And it's, it's you know, a part of talking to each other. So realizing the different components of it, making the producer's life a little bit easier, the producer will make your life a little bit easier as well. And hopefully when all parts of that machine are firing and everyone's talking to each other, um, it just it's a lot less stressful for everyone yeah yeah that's good so the, to recap all that said let me help you uh mark said like give us feedback on how we help you and then and and, and carolina well said that you know like think how you can maybe also help the producer which helps the the, the game the project so uh yeah those are actually yeah very very good i like that the circles around to the yeah the producers part of the team thing because I've always yeah. seen, like, you know, the code monkeys are sitting in their different little hobby holes. That's where I've always been. Then we have yeah. our lead programmer or whatever that's kind of with us, but also sort of outside of the room. And then the producer in a different room where the leads go to hang out and talk about stuff, I guess. I've never been on that side. But it's like, <laughs> yeah, now that you're t talking about all these things about how, like, yeah, we're here for you. We want an open door. We want to communicate. We want to help. We want to know how we can help. Like I, I see that producers are more part of a team now than I did like 30 minutes ago, which is really interesting. <laughs> well, that's great. That, that's like, job well done. I don't think so. You made a good like mark for producers, but it's really interesting that that I can have such a different view of producers just by talking to them a little bit more. Like yeah. maybe I haven't done that enough, is what I'm seeing. Well, and it's also I think important that. Just real quick, it's important that you kind of understand the role in the organization of those people. And, um, you know, it might need to be one of those standard kind of like um, breakdown of duties and, and who's supposed to do what, just a bit of understanding that. Like if you set up a new team and you say, okay, here, here's what I am to you, or here's what I think I am to you, or what do you need me for? You can, you can kind of set that up. Um, like I said, in some companies, it's doling out the work. Um, and it's like, we have these tickets and we have these people, so we're going to sign these tickets to these people. And sometimes it's just, we have this goal. You all are going to help contribute to our understanding of this goal. And me as a member of the team will help facilitate that, but I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm, I, I have said the phrase, I'm not your boss, uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a really good point. I, I, I think. For me, being a part of the team is the most fun part of the work as well. Like my favorite part of the day is when I go and sit down with, like I, I might sit down with my my designer and and say, "Hey, what are you working on?" And then we'll sit there and and just chit chat about the stuff that he's working on and just some bounce some stuff uh, off each other, or even going over to a programmer who's uh, who's working on something. Uh, of course, try not to bother in, in in the middle of something important, but maybe they're struggling on something and you can be the rubber duck that they need. Just sit there and hear them talk it out. And then, yeah, that, that's, that's being a part of that team and just go and hang out with uh, them. is like my favorite part of the job. I love talking, uh, talking shit with them and just talking games and then just hang out as well. Important part of it. Yeah. <clears throat> So earlier in our so earlier in the chat, we were talking about uh, all the way from or at the beginning of this whole uh, this whole chat, we were talking about how different ways that you've gotten into the producer role and the different the, um, that there are so many avenues of going into production. So my next question is actually a little bit of a, a continuation of that, and and you've uh, and that is um, from the role that you have now as a producer. I'm not saying that you would be considering this, but 
do you know of a potential way for it to naturally move on from being a producer? What kind of roles do people naturally take on after becoming a producer? I mean, Carolina, you have experience with this exactly. And um, yeah. would you guys like to talk about that? I mean, if you've decided, Carolina said that she wanted to go over from a producer into a more creative role again. What other kinds of, of, of roles can one go to from a producer? Yeah, I can actually quickly start that. My path to the narrative designer led me being a producer. We had this one project that we had pretty tight schedule and turns out that nobody had time for do the narrative design. And I volunteered that I said I can help. And eventually I ca that came all of my <laughs> under my management and luckily I succeeded in it and it came out great and I was lucky enough to tell after, I, I, after that I got a few more other projects that I did the narrative design and I was very lucky enough to have the so flexible company that once I let the management know that hey perhaps I would like to move, do more narrative design and luckily that was okay with them and like I mentioned earlier that my switch from communications and from producer to communication wasn't that first very very easy that I handled the internal and external communications and marketing and communications between everyone and so that sort of a felt very easy and like I mentioned just the production side dropped out so I uh, one thing that I always said that I've been asked that that how how did I do it I just always said that speak up nobody can know what you want to do or what you can do if, but you have to say that can I try can I help you and I'm an example that that led me to my current roles and I'm very very happy where I am now Yay. Martin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's good life advice and not just production career advice, really. Um, if you if you want something, say it, you know, speak up about your needs. I mean, that, that's relationship advice and, you know, um, <laughs> whichever whichever kind of relationship even. That's just communicating your wants and needs is so important. I wish I could have told my, my younger self that. Um, I've gotten to bounce around between different roles, like four or five different roles in the same company. I've gotten to work on side projects and they usually didn't fall into my lap. It was usually because I said, I could do that. I think you need someone to do that. And that sounds like it's probably me. So um, I, I I can be complacent for long periods of time, but then I'm a bit of an opportunist when, when those things come up and say, yep, that should, that should maybe be, be me. Um, so making yourself useful. Um, I, I came from other roles and landed in production, and I, I don't know that it's my my final home, um, which you know the higher up producers always maybe maybe that'll maybe that makes them sad or something, but you know there are other fun things to do at a game studio. I have uh, like job ADHD and actual ADHD, <laughs> but you know um, <laughs> bouncing around between things because nothing is so interesting that you can do it for five years at a time. So. Um, like I said, I previously gotten to work on some board games as as a side um, side gig, uh, and then you know maybe more creative, maybe more design in the future would be would be great. Just point of advice though, when it comes to that, is still take note of your capacity, um, because if you try to do all of the things and you try to bounce around between things, sometimes you'll find out that you are trying to do two jobs at once you're, you're at 150 percent you burn yourself out um or maybe more likely you're doing two jobs poorly <laughs> so um knowing your capacity and again communicating your needs is a, a pretty integral part of that good, good yeah. anything to add i want to echo the speak up part i think that's absolutely true uh, and <clears throat> in funcom um uh, there's also like uh, the um, if you if you think you're uh, if you want something and you speak up uh, about it and you and you give your reasons like there's there's no rules for saying like that says no you you're 
you're this, so you can't do that. Um, but you need to show that you're you're capable and and prove your case, of course. Um, but I think that's with everything in life. And and I think the question is like you can't. It's impossible. It's impossible to answer what you can go from after being a producer because it depends on who you are as a person and what your interests are, yeah. which also evolve as you live, right? So it it evolves as you as you grow and, and live as a person. So I, I want to echo the speak up and and state your needs and wants and make sure that those are heard because there's there's uh, no limits to where you could go. If you want to? Very very good answer. I would like. You know, I take even for it. Like it's a good skill in life in general. Like this is my job, hobbies, relationship. Like if you don't vocalize, if you don't say, speak up, people won't know what you're, what you want, what you, what you think. Very, very good. Uh, really, at so this point, like a little bit about because this is, you know, icebreakers about the Nordics. Uh, just uh, you might have, you might not have some uh, insight into this, but. Knowing people who have worked in uh, is in in some Eastern European studios, uh, have said that back there, the role of a producer is really not kind of appreciated. It's kind of like oh, that shithead again, what? And then it's just kind of like a thing. Whereas in the Nordics, at least from my experience, they are quite well revered, uh, or 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 at least appreciated and respected. Uh, but uh, and I of course know know mostly about about Finland, but it sounds like it's the same in Norway and and in Sweden, which is cool. Go us Nordics, I guess. Uh, do you have you heard? Do you know of any other places or countries or uh, where where they have a different perspective on being a producer? <laughs> if you differs. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. yeah you, so yeah, yeah, I think I think it, I think it differs very much based on on company and culture and project as well. So <clears throat> I think you're right, but I I don't think I personally have any experience with that. But I know people like in my in the industry that are my friends that are working as a producer, and 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 it might be very different. Some producers, uh, it depends on what kind of producer you are and personality you have as well. Like what kind of uh, what drives you as a producer and yeah uh, i guess more, more more as a role than a than a person but yeah like if if you don't know that's fine it's it's more of a personal interest to to hear yep. if you have but cool okay uh in that case uh we are running well not out of time but we're <laughs> very close to the <laughs> end and i think we have a a final little thing here uh, yeah we have a final question yeah. it's probably the most important one yeah, because uh, yeah. we we oh, have been talking about a lot of stuff that's like yeah it's a pretty tense job you have to deal with a lot of different things you have to deal with stress you have to deal with you know managing a lot of things but we we do like to have fun in game though right so I want to know and we all want to know uh, what the most fun experience you've had or the most fun you know memory you have from being a producer uh, that you can share with us. Or if it's just, it's a good job, that's a good answer too. Uh... <laughs> yeah, something, like, yeah, if there's anything unique, crazy, interesting, fun, something memorable that stands um, out. This is explicitly tied to being a producer. Uh, yeah, with regards to producer. Uh, Carolina, please. Yeah, I, I would say that uh, as a producer, it, it like we previously already discussed, that it could open like, a ton of different op options and opportunities for you and different doors. And I think those doors can be really exciting. They can be very great conferences around the world. They can be like, you get to meet a whole of different people because you're not perhaps tied to your chair and tied to your work computer. So it, I think that's pretty awesome thing for a producer being as a producer type of person that opens a lot of doors for you that gives you exciting opportunities good answer Ola, I, I, find it, I find it's a hard question to answer specifically as a producer which is i think is what mark was uh, touching up on as well because as a game developer i have a bunch of fun experiences from the industry 
but as a producer specifically, I'm, I'm struggling a bit. We're all about those difficult questions here. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you don't have anything, that's that's fine as well. If, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'd was... rather share a game dev thing. Like, well, I was thinking I was... like, oh yeah, that uh, that Avicii party we went to one time, that was pretty fun. Or you know, backstage <laughs> with Dead Mouse, that was great. But I wasn't a producer then. <laughs> Um, and you know i i joined uh i became a producer like march 2020 ish uh so that that tells you about the time frame and how long i've actually gotten to work with people in person the whole pandemic time so <laughs> i am still looking forward to those great memories being built <laughs> um, <laughs> as we slowly get people back in offices i mean yeah, it, it was it was as a producer back in like this was back in uh, 2013 or something when i was in the uh, in quillbyte the industry studio i founded uh, and as a producer you're trying to solve problems right so um and being at gdc with your first indie game you really want to show it off but you might not have the the money or the funding or the the network yet so just being that person who's trying okay how can we sneak into this indie mix thing and then trying to figure out this clever plan of how are you going to sneak in and, and meeting up at the at the door and saying, oh, I, I'm, I'm definitely on that guest list. Oh, that must be a mistake. You should talk to the, the person who's in charge. And then you're like, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's fine. You, you, you go, go, go. Go get in the elevator. So you and then you get in. Startup you. Nice. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. And then we got the time in front of the journalists that we desperately needed. And it, it helped the game so much, and that was amazing. So, so I'm yeah, so you heard. Yeah. If you want to be a good producer, you're going to break rules and uh, be bold and go. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy that's, that guerrilla tactics are on the table because, like, exactly. I'm I'm currently also obviously working on twenty different projects at once because of the ADHD, like we were talking about. But I'm I'm trying to make one of them a real project. So if I can imbue some guerrilla tactics, like I'm stoked. That's that's. You know. It's better to ask for forgiveness than permission when it comes I to do love that phrase. the kinds of things that you, uh, uh, this doesn't apply to all situations in life, but when, when you're like, oh, I need I need to show my thing to you, or I need to like, oh, I want this role, or I want this, they just come on in there and tell them what you're all about. Yeah, as long as you're not hurting people, just like be mm -hmm. be a bit assertive and show, show your feelings uh, on your sleeves, sort of. I love that. Sure. That was that was a good one. That was a good one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and I think that kind of uh, probably concludes our session. Sylvia, were you about to say something? No, I was not. No. Yeah. Okay. You, you looked so. Uh, no, I but... was ready. I was ready because I was going to be like, we're we're over time now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mother. Uh, we will. Oh, uh, <laughs> we will be finishing. But before we go, if you guys want to. Plug anything, either your own stuff and slash or your company slash game. Uh, feel free to throw it out. Uh, Carolina, do you want to start? Mm. Promote a small <laughs> ad. Yeah, you can. Yeah, if you want to just whatever yeah, you want to do, where people can find you, where they can find your company or your games or whatever, if you want to. Yeah, well, currently our. CEO and creative direct director are at GDC at San Francisco. So if you're there, say hi. If you want to learn more about Web3 and the company who leads the way now in Finland and in the world, it's quick save. And if you are ever in the need of very good TikTok material made by me, follow quick save at TikTok. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. This is the good first plug. shout out we've had so far. That is nice. Nice. We'll get those mm -hmm. Gen Zers. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, great uh, thing actually. Yeah, because the GDC is going on, so that's uh, that's a huge shout out. Someone's out there. Do connect. Uh, Ule, you want to go next? Yeah, I I hope this has been uh, fun to to watch, and that I mean. I hope that we're giving a good impression of how it is to be a producer because it truly is a really, really rewarding uh, career. And 
and you get to do a, a lot of fun and, and cool stuff and you get to help the team and you're a part of the team in delivering uh, cool projects. So I, I really hope we want more producers. So I really hope that uh, this helps you, uh, yeah, get a feel for what that means and uh, gets you hyped about it. And then also, of course, if you want to get in touch with me, just follow me on, on LinkedIn. Uh, Ole Haley is my uh, name. I can probably drop it somewhere. And then, uh, yeah, check out June Awakening, the game that we're working on. Super stoked about uh, that project and, and yeah, looking forward to releasing it to the masses at some point. Do, do you know when you're releasing it ish? I you say know, it? but <laughs> <laughs> you'll never know. <laughs> Producer answer. Yeah, Mark. Yeah. Um, so, hey, if you're one of today's lucky 10,000 that hasn't heard of uh, the world of Minecraft, I encourage you to go look that up and uh, and try out Minecraft Dungeons, among among other things. Um, if you can find the secret party squid in the game that I helped design the little Easter egg for, let me know all about it, um, which you can do on Twitter. Twitter's my main home for, for things. Uh, there are a fair number of Minecraft fans, but there are not enough game developers that I get to talk to. So I'm always interested in talking to people in my industry. Uh, so my Twitter is Mark, M-A-R-C, with an underscore and then I-R-L. So um, yeah, hope to talk to more people about making games. I want to quickly add that I want to, like Ola mentioned, that it's really a great opportunity to explain our visions because pr produce there are so many producers and different paths. So this was a very good opportunity to hear your thoughts too. But also I wish that we could now help someone else who was, who is figuring that should I be a producer or I am a producer should I be more this and that, or should I take notes from them? But yeah, I want to still add. I add. I'm a too good employee. I, I advertised my company <laughs> and not myself. But yeah, I'm also available at LinkedIn, and I'm very passionate about people who are who who are not perhaps not coming from the game industry background or game industry education. So if you wish to become a game developer or game industry worker, so. I always feel happy to discuss with people and passionate people about that. Yeah, so you can find me on LinkedIn. And I can vouch if you need help with your thesis, Carolina, that's the person to go to. Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, all of you uh, people there watching, and thank you for the questions. There was, unfortunately, a couple of questions we didn't have time to really jump into. Uh, but we have one last question from our produ uh, our producer mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, to you guys. Uh, what would you guys want? What role would you think we should cover next? Ooh, we're a little curveball there. This is I, for I, both. I, oh, sorry. So I don't know what you've had in the past. I didn't go and check the history, but I would throw out QA, maybe? That would be a. Mm. Mm. Cool yeah. question to hear from. Mm. Yeah, that, that's a very good point. That I think a lot of people had their own vision on what is QA, but do people know about it? Is it just playing games? Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, that's, yeah, that's we haven't done one. QA, have we? Yeah, we have not done QA yet. So yeah, that's no. uh, that's a good one. Yeah, I was initially gonna say animator just because it's kind of cool and fun to watch things go like this but um <laughs> qa yeah i'll i'll third that one because it tends to be one of the lesser understood roles and frankly one of the less appreciated roles but qa is also part of your team so yeah. and we see in the chat that someone also mentioned technical technical artist and we haven't gone to technical art either mm. so this is really great we have some great ideas only roles to go through uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, the more you yeah. start digging, the more you find. That's very true. That's very true. All right. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Ola. Thank you, Carolina. Thank you, my wonderful uh, co host. And thank you, Viv. And thank you, all of you who watched. It has been a pleasure, even if we were a little bit later today than we normally are. Uh, thank you for being here and take care. All the best. Catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Thank you for joining. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Bye. <laughs>